Welcome to the presentation of our paper, a sim to real deep learning approach for the transformation of images from multiple vehicle mounted cameras to a semantically segmented image in bird's eye view. The research was conducted by me, Bastian Lampe, Lena Dreyer and Lutz Eckstein at the Institute for Automotive Engineering of RWTH Aachen University in Germany. Our paper presents a methodology which allows to compute semantically segmented bird's eye view images. The neural network used for this task is trained only with synthetic data from simulation. The methodology's goal is to allow a successful transfer of the trained neural network to a real-world application. In the next couple of minutes, I will discuss how this can be achieved. First, let's take a look at the problem statement. The input to our approach, which we call CAM to BEV, are semantically segmented camera images from a vehicle. In our paper, we analyze the four camera and a single camera sensor setup, but in general, any number of cameras would be possible. Note that we assume there already exist models which can produce a semantic segmentation of a camera image. CAM to BEV now transforms the input images to a bird's eye view image, which is semantically segmented as well. In addition, it introduces a class for occluded areas. This is necessary because not all areas in the BEV image are visible in the camera images. The data and code of our approach are available on our GitHub page. Both will allow you to reproduce all the results of our paper. Now let's take a look at why a new approach for this task seems necessary. Automated vehicles need a representation of their environment that can be taken as input for behavior planning, for example. Occupancy grid maps are one popular type of representation. OGMs can be computed based on different methods and different types of sensors. So far, these approaches come with various drawbacks, which I would like to summarize. One popular method for camera-based approaches, for example, is inverse perspective mapping can be used to transform images to bird's eye view. IPM relies on the assumption that the world is flat. Obviously, that's an insufficient approximation, at least for objects such as vehicles and pedestrians. Anything that is not part of the flat road plane gets distorted as seen in the image on the right. On top of that, IPM leads to an effective drop in resolution the farther away from the camera you get. It also does not provide any quantification of uncertainty for areas which are not visible in the camera image. Then there are LIDAR-based approaches. These often make use of an inverse sensor model and dempster schafer theory to compute a so-called evidential OGM. These don't provide a lot of semantics apart from occupied or free. It's hard to differentiate between different kinds of objects here. And you need a LIDAR sensor, which is still rather expensive. Then there is deep learning, which is a popular method to learn to compute a segmented bird's eye view image. Usually you need labels which contain uh, 3D information on objects and surfaces. Since producing 3D labels is rather expensive, these methods can often differentiate only between a few different classes. In our research, we set the goal to overcome these drawbacks by coming up with a methodology which combines different methods to achieve that goal. There are four key ideas to our approach, which when combined allow to overcome many of the aforementioned drawbacks. First, our labeled data comes from a simulation. This is especially important for the bird's eye view images since there exist no sufficient data sets for these kind of data. We make use of deep learning, which relies on vast amounts of labeled data. Simulations are capable of providing these labeled data automatically, which is why they are used. Simulations come with the problem of being only an approximation of the real world. There's a so-called reality gap. Raw camera images from a simulation are usually not sufficiently realistic to use them for learning a real-world task. Many approaches try to make synthetic data more realistic, but we posit that reality actually provides more detail than necessary. It's better to remove detail from reality, which is what happens when you compute a segmented image. That's why we use semantically segmented images as an intermediate representation 
between the simulated and the real world. A synthetic segmented image is very similar to a real segmented image. This makes it possible to learn from simulated data. When deep learning is used, classical approaches are often completely discarded, even though they contain valuable information. IPM, for example, can compute a so-called homography image, which is already quite similar to our desired output. IPM makes use of information on the camera's intrinsic and extrinsic parameters, which wouldn't be explicitly available if we naively trained our neural network end-to-end -end from camera images to the desired output. By incorporating IPM, we make use of the available information and reduce the complexity of the task which our neural network has to perform. Last, we introduce an additional class for areas which are not visible in the camera images. When creating the training data, we use a simple ray tracing algorithm which determines these uncertain areas. Next, we take a look at our developed neural network architecture which performs the transformation. When transforming images via IPM, some information contained in the images is already lost. That is why we do not sequentially perform first IPM and then the processing via neural network, but incorporate IPM into the neural network architecture we developed. We make use of spatial transformer units developed by Google DeepMind in 2015. They allow spatial transformations inside a convolutional neural network. We make use of a typical unit architecture. Each image is processed by a separate encoder, which contains the spatial transformer units. The output is concatenated, upsampled, and then concatenated with the output of the skip connections. The architecture is in principle capable of handling an arbitrary number X of camera images, hence the name unit XST, where ST stands for spatial transformer. We will later compare the architecture with typical other CNN architectures, such as DeepLab Exception and DeepLab MobileNet. These don't contain spatial transformer units, which is why we take the homography image produced by IPM as input. We will come back to this later on when we examine the results. First, let's take a look at the datasets which we generated and which are also publicly available to reproduce the results of the paper. All images are color-coded images according to the 30 classes of the Cityscapes dataset. For the labels, we introduce an additional class for occluded areas, leaving us with 31 classes. In dataset number one, we analyze a four-camera setup which is capable of providing a 360 degree representation of the environment. Since we want to focus on our approach and not too much on how many classes could be successfully predicted, we combine some of the classes into 10 classes plus the class for occlusions. There are about 33,000 training samples and 3,700 validation samples in this dataset. One sample consists of the four segmented camera images and the segmented BEV image, including the occlusion class. We also provide the segmented BEV images without the occlusion class and the homography images. Our second dataset is optimized for use in a typical single camera setup. It represents the sensor setup of our own research vehicle, so we can show a real-world application of our approach. Again, since we want to focus on our new approach, we reduce the classes available in the dataset to three classes, plus the class for occluded areas. Here we have about 32,000 training samples and 3,200 synthetic validation samples. The validation samples are used for selecting the best model, but we later show qualitative results on real-world data. For the evaluation, we compare various models, which I will briefly present. As a performance metric, we use the intersection over union, 
or IOU, which ranges from 0% to 100%. The IOU is computed on the synthetic validation data of the four camera setup dataset. I already presented our developed unit architecture, which takes as input the individual segmented camera images and performs the spatial transformations inside of the network. Deep Lab Exception and MobileNet take the homography image as input. Deep Lab Exception star and MobileNet star take a stack of the camera images as input. UNET X star takes the individual camera images as separate inputs and contains no spatial transformer units. In all three cases, the network has to learn the spatial transformation. We start the quantitative evaluation with our baseline, the homography image. We can compare the homography image with the desired output and compute the intersection over union. On the bottom of the slide, you can see examples for the segmented camera images, the ground truth, and the homography image. As expected, the homography works relatively well for flat surfaces, such as road, sidewalk, and vegetation. Objects with vertical extent have very low scores, and occlusions cannot be handled at all. Next, we take a look at UNET XST. In comparison to the other networks, it performs best on most of the classes, indicated by the bold numbers. Classes such as car, truck, and bus now achieve relatively good results as well. The occlusions are also successfully detected, meaning the network was able to learn the general shape of objects. Small objects such as pedestrians and bikes still score relatively low. One challenge is their relatively small size in the labels. Small absolute deviations between label and prediction lead to a relatively large reduction in the IOU score. Deep Lab exception performs similarly well, even outperforming our network in some classes. This comes at the price of more than four times as many parameters though, making it relatively slow. The next four networks perform substantially worse than our network, which is why I won't get into the details of their results. The most important thing to take away from the relatively bad results of the networks, marked with a star, is that the incorporation of the spatial transformation, either before the network or inside the network, seems to increase the performance substantially. Here we see two examples for the qualitative results of the real-world application using only a single front-facing camera. Remember that our neural networks were only trained on synthetic data. The images show that the networks successfully generalize to the real-world data. They also generalize to new environments since the depicted environment was not modeled in our simulation. Again, our proposed network UNET XST shows promising results. Since we cannot yet quantify the result, we cannot say whether our network performs better than Deep Lab Exception. The video on the left shows how UNIT XST transforms four synthetic segmented images to the desired BEV image with occlusions. We see that the network successfully learned this task. We saw earlier that the approach also showed promising results on the real world data and that our network architecture can outperform other typical architectures. In the future, we would like to replace the ground truth data from the simulation with more realistic output by a neural network trained on synthetic data. We will also need to create labels for our real-world data in order to quantify the performance of our approach in a real-world setting. In order to try the four camera setup in the real world, it will be necessary to equip a vehicle with four cameras and have models available that can segment their images. There are many open research questions and we would be happy if you contribute to our project, which you can find on GitHub. Thanks for listening.